Ready to shine inside out? Welcome to Polish Beauty Podcast, where ambition meets empowerment. We talk business, beauty, brain, body. I am your host, Dr. Daisy Ayim, triple board certified cosmetic surgeon and OBGYN. Let's get polished. You are navigating hair thinning. You are going through hormonal shifts. You are not stressed, but somehow you are shedding hair. Today, we're going to unpack a lot. And I know you are interested in this topic because I have seen it in my practice for over 20 years, the concerns, the conversations, and the worries. Imagine you are eating clean. You are taking all your supplements. You're doing exactly what you need to do in your life, but somehow the hair is just falling off. You want answers and you deserve it. Today, we're going to unpack the hormonal connections between female hair loss, what's normal, what's not, and what can you do about it? So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about hormones and hair. Let's talk about the hair follicle and the hair growth. There are three stages of hair growth. Why well, should say the hair cycles? The first stage is anagen. That's your hair growth. That's where your hair is grown a lot. And then your second phase or your second stage is the catagen. This is your transition phase. And then your last phase is called telogen, which is resting and shedding. This is where you lose a lot of hair. The average hair loss in a day when you comb or you should lose is about 50 to 100 strands. For someone that has a very curly hair, you may seem like a lot and you have very thin or refined hair, you may not think it's that much when you actually see 50 to 100, but that's what you should lose every day. Unfortunately, some women lose a lot more. We need to know why. And there's so many reasons that that could be the reason. Let's talk about five key hormones. And then, of course, another player in hair growth. Let's start with the most common, estrogen. Estrogen is your friend. It definitely helps promote hair growth and lengthens the anagen phase. Remember, the anagen phase is the growth stage of the hair cycle. When women are pregnant, especially the estrogen levels go up. They see this surge of hair growth the vast majority of women. And it is a great time because your hair is flowing and you are loving this. Then you add progesterone, which is your second hormone. That helps with strengthening the hair. So it gives it support, density. So pregnancy, so I keep referring to pregnancy because that's the perfect time to look at estrogen and progesterone effect on the hair. It really gives a very lush hair for most women. Then you have your third hormone, which is your androgens. That's basically testosterone. The problem with testosterone or androgen hormones is that it shrinks the hair follicles. So it creates this miniaturization. So this thinning of hair and shrinking of the follicles. So testosterone androgens are not your friend when it comes to hair growth, not your friend at all. Then your fourth player is your thyroid. That's your T3 and T. These are crucial for hair growth, textures, and thickness. So your thyroid is good for the balancing of your hair growth. And depending on the thyroid disorder, your hair can be affected as well. Then you have your big five, the last one, cortisol. We all know cortisol is a stress hormone, right? So when you have chronic stress, that affects your hair growth. And this is primarily seen in with shedding. And that's your telogen phase, the shedding part of the hair cycle. So cortisol, which is your stress, can affect your hair. But let's not forget another important player. It's not part of what I call the big five hormone, but still an important player in hair growth or hair loss. That is the insulin and blood sugar imbalance. So when you have this imbalance of insulin and blood sugar, it can drive your hair production to be less. So it increases androgen excess. And remember, I explained androgen, which is your testosterone, is not good for your hair. It causes shrinkage of the hair follicles. So when you have this imbalance of, and when you have this imbalance of what I just mentioned, uh, it can cause your hair to not grow. And the imbalance is insulin and blood sugar. So let's talk about the second part of this podcast, which is going to be the phases, or I should say the root cause analysis of hair growth. 
what is the reason why you're not having your hair growth? The first thing is hormonal shifts and life cycles. There's some critical events that happen to us, especially women, that affects our hair growth. The first one, obviously, is puberty. When you are transitioning from childhood to adolescent, you do go through puberty and your hair is affected. That's when you actually see hair coming to age, right? What is under your arm, in your pubic area, you do see hair production. And that can affect our hair. Another life changes that happens is postpartum. So women in the postpartum stage, they have a lot of shedding, which is that telogen part of the hair cycle that I mentioned. The reason why they're having all this shedding is because during pregnancy, you have estrogen progesterone that is surge, causes your hair to grow, and you are just in excess. And then you give birth. The hormone level takes a nosedive, and then all of a sudden you're just shedding and shedding. That was a huge complaint with a lot of my patients after delivering, and they just said, oh my gosh, I'm going to go bald because of how much hair is in the shower when they wash. So another hormonal shift or life changes that happens is perimenopause and menopause. Now we don't hear about menopause a lot. There's so much buzz with it, which is good. I'm not taking away from it, but... Your hair does changes with this life change, especially with the decline of estrogen um, and the relatively dominance of androgen, your hair thins and your hair sheds. Another life change or hormonal changes that happen and that affects our hair is PCOS. PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome, and this is a multifactorial syndrome. You know, you have hormonal imbalance, you have your a cycle irregularity and also you have hair imbalance because PCOS excess estrogen androgen as I explained once again causes your hair follicles to thin so androgens are not good for your hair then you have medical conditions that can affect your hair loss and you have your thyroid disorder there's hypothyroidism which means low thyroid and hyper thyroidism, which means excess thyroid. This imbalance in thyroid levels can cause your hair growth to be affected. And then you have autoimmune diseases like autoimmune um, alopecia areta, lupus. This can cause your hair growth to change. You also have insulin resistance and diabetes. And for your lifestyle triggers, these are some reasons why you can have hair loss or crash dieting. Okay, rapid weight loss, over exercising. Can you imagine that? Yeah, over exercising, over exercising, sleep deprivation, emotional trauma, chronic stress. And I'm also going to add this hair traction. So, a lot of hairstyles, especially with my black women, can affect hair loss. As I'm recording this podcast, the irony of it is I have on my cornrow cornrow braid uh, pony but there's a trick in making sure you don't have hair loss due to traction hairstyle have the stylist to be very gentle and not excessive pulling this may mean that the hairstyle may not last as long but at least your hair follicles preserve and your edges are fine so continue on with some of the hormonal shifts and life changes that happen with female hair loss you do have birth control and hormonal therapy. In general, progesterone-only progesterone pills and your IUDs, which contains progesterone-only, can trigger hair shed. So starting and stopping hormonal therapy can also cause hair fluctuation as well. Now that we've gone down to some of the root cause analysis of why female hair loss happens, let's talk about how do we diagnose and work up this problem. Labs. It's very fascinating that I have patients come in my office and say, Dr. Aim, my hair is losing, just run some labs. And I'm like, what labs? They're like, I don't know. So let's go over some of the labs that we need to do to check for hair loss. Obviously, as I mentioned, your thyroid disorder can cause some hair loss. So we want to check the TSH, T3 and T4. We also want to look at ferritin. Ferritin is your iron storage. And the iron storage The level should be over 70 nanogram per milliliter for hair regrowth. So we're going to check your ferritin level. I also check your DHEA sulfate, and that's your your byproduct of testosterone. And you have your total and your free testosterone that's also checked. Of course, we're going to check estrogen and progesterone, which are your two primary hormones that are 
very much affected. And also, hold on, we're going to check vitamin D, zinc, vitamin B, and lastly, we're going to check cortisol. So those are the labs that you want to have checked when we are investigating why you're losing so much hair. Your doctor will obviously know this test or your aesthetic provider or whoever that you're consulting. This is, these are some lab tests that can be drawn to evaluate hair loss. It's very important to also look at a holistic approach in hair loss. We just don't want to look at the derm side of it. We also want to look at the endocrinology aspect of it and the gynecologic aspect of it because all three pillars affect hair loss in women. The gynecologic aspect, obviously, is the hormonal imbalance and the transitioning in her life. And then the derm is the physical and also the medical conditions of it. And then endocrine, you know, you have endocrinologic causes of hair loss. So the approach of hair loss is a functional approach. We're looking at these three pillars as an entity. Then we also proceed from there. We don't want to look at this as a band-aid solution like, oh, you're losing hair, take a supplement and that's it, or take over an counter medication, that's it. We want it to be truly functional and holistic approach. Now let's talk about some treatments. What are the treatments for hair loss? Well, obviously we're going to start with the obvious one, lifestyle. The things you do can affect your hair loss. And the lifestyle and nutritional foundations are important. So what I always tell my patient, increase your protein intake. It sounds very cliche, but the quality of your protein is important. And you want to focus on keratin, which is protein-based, and this can really be helpful with uh, hair growth. We also talk about, or at least I encourage, omega-3s, iron, vitamin B12s, and vitamin D. Those vitamins, you want to make it part of your routine. If you get a good multivitamin supplement, it's going to have all of that in it included. You don't need to go and buy H1. You can actually take one pill that has all of this or a powder. So scalp stimulation. So the act of stimulating the cap increases blood flow and can trigger uh, hair growth. Also, reducing your stress. Very cliche, but you have to identify in your life what are your stressors and actively engage in reducing this because this can affect your hair loss. Some of the other treatment or the next level of treatment is medical interventions. There are medications available to treat your hair loss. We have minoxidil. We know about this. It's helpful with hair loss. You also have your Regenerative medicine is an exciting topic right now. And when it comes to hair, there's a lot going on with it. In the umbrella of regenerative medicine, we're talking about PRP, PRF. We're talking about exosome, your peptides, and all of that can be used to generate hair growth. And it can be included in the scalp massage. So you can have transport that have all this regenerative ingredients and they're transported into the hair follicles as you're massaging the, the scalp. And then of course, hormones, as I mentioned, that should be an interplay in managing hair loss. So imagine if you have a woman in her late perimenopause or early menopause with hair thinning and hair loss. Maybe consider starting hard on HRT might be a good part of your treatment plan because we do know, as I've mentioned, hormone can affect your hair loss. So supplements, that's another treatment of hair loss. The problem with supplements and nutraceuticals is that they're not FDA approved. So there's not a true data or there is some data on it. However, it's not FDA approved. I think you can take it, but be mindful of that. So some of the supplements in the market are your Nutrafol, your Viviscal, your Collagen, MSM, Silica. So all those things have been shown to be helpful with hair loss, and you may consider. I would say this. There are some things you should not do when it comes to hair loss and treatment therapy. Number one, supplement. I cannot emphasize this. You know, I've had over the years patients that come in my office, and they're on 17, 20 different supplements, bless their heart. Now, do you have to take that many supplements? My immediate answer is no. Now, there's some women that love it and if they're happy with it, 
I guess that's your jam. You don't need to take that many supplements. You know, you can be very intentional how you approach with it. I think three or four supplements daily is more than plenty. Get you a multivitamin that has most of what you need and then maybe a few others you may get. So over supplementing without labs is not the way to approach hair loss at all. We also, I recommend ignoring rapid diffuse loss. What do I mean by that? Anything that you do drastically to your body is going to affect your hair. If you drastically lose weight or you dramatically gain weight, hair is going to be part of that transition in your life. So be mindful of it. Also, do not delay evaluation. If you see your hair shedding, Please don't go beyond six months before you consult someone. You know, a lot of women can be in denial and they just kind of, you know, take a blind eye to it, but that is to your detriment. So the minute you suspect you are losing hair and it's abnormal, consult because you can get some really great solutions soon and prevent an outcome that's not favorable to you. So hair is a deeply passionate identity for women. Some women use hair as their core identity. Some do not. Regardless, that's a part of you that you see every day. You know, it makes women feel very powerful when she is in control of her hair, regardless of the length, whether it's next to bald or bald or excessively long hair. She has to be in control to really feel powerful. So hair loss can make a woman feel powerless. So, and understanding the hormonal connections is really important. So to empower this woman, you have to approach it in a very holistic manner. As I mentioned, addressing the hormone, addressing the medical condition, and you really want to give a woman clarity and a choice. So call of action is to think about hair loss as a medical condition, as a personal journey. If you know anyone that this episode may be helpful to, kindly let them know to listen to the episode. I welcome questions in a DM, or you can always call my office to talk more about hair loss. This is an overview. Of course, we can go deeper and deeper into it. And each one's condition may be a little different. They may utilize other treatments. You know, I didn't mention light therapy, but light therapy is something that is a broad, it's a lifestyle change or uh, device that can be used in hair loss. So again, hair loss is a deeply passionate thing for every woman. Hormones does affect your hair loss. The big five is something to consider. And you are not alone in this journey. So please don't feel like you are alone. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for listening. Video recording of this episode will be featured on our YouTube channel, Dr. Daisy Ayim. We are also found on Instagram at Polish Beauty Podcast or at Dr. Daisy Ayim. Remember, new episodes drop every Wednesday. So stay tuned. Please like, share, follow.